Hey folks, Paul Reddick here, and if you're the parent of a baseball player, I want you to focus on the number 23. The number 23 is going to be the most important number you'll ever have to focus on as the parent of a baseball player. It has nothing to do with Michael Jordan. I'm going to tell you, I'll explain the whole thing in a minute. Ever since we started the Baseball Dads podcast and the Baseball Dads newsletter, our office has been like the hub of emails and phone calls of parents that are telling us some stories are nightmarish, some stories are scary, and some stories are good, and some stories are great, and everything in between. About And it's all about navigating this world of baseball that so many people seem to be getting lost in. You probably know I'm one of those guys that wishes it were different, but I also know it's probably not going to change. So the only thing I can do is share with you my beliefs about what's most important, share with you the stories of the other parents, and hopefully we can reach as many people as we can and not lose sight of what's, what's most important. That's why the number 23 is the most important number for you as a parent. Here's why. It's going to be around that age that your child takes their first steps out into the real world. Now it might be 22, it might be 24, but 23 is a good number. And ever since going on this journey with this Baseball Dads newsletter and podcast, I've really been fixated on that number. And I thought, what kind of a person do we want to send out into the world at age 23? What do we want them to have? What do we want them to be prepared for? What do we want them to know and do and, and, and to be a, to have a career, to be a leader, to be a husband, to be a father? What do we have to do to not raise good boys, but to have a great man come out at 23? And so in my journal, I kind of drew this funnel. And I said, really, this is parenting. This is kids growing up. This is kids coming up through the system. And this is kind of like, you know, probably like college and maybe they're stepping out into internships and stuff like that. But this is where we're going to send them out kind of on their own. So this is where they kind of leave high school and they go into this realm of college or career. What do we have to do as coaches and parents? What do we have to put in this funnel to make sure that age 23, we produce someone who can be not a good boy, not a great baseball player, but a great leader, a great man, a great father, a great husband, because it's not in my best interest as a business person to say this, right? But there's 6.4 million uh, little leaguers right now. There's 1,000 major leaguers. I don't know what those odds are exactly. I didn't calculate them before the video, but the odds aren't good. The odds aren't good that at age 23, they will be using their baseball skills. Their baseball skills, for whatever that is, 99.99999% of these people, of this 6.4 million that go into this funnel here, so 6.4 million come into this funnel, 1,000 use their skills for baseball, the odds are their baseball skills are going to be useless. So when their baseball skills are useless, what are they left with? Well, they can be left with a lot of great lessons that are taught through the game. And this is where we've kind of lost, where baseball used to be this great tool to teach things, and now it's kind of became, become this destination of you're a tournament champion and you're a, it's almost like it's, you're a professional uh, baseball player and a part-time kid. So what needs to go into this funnel during this parenting time to spit out someone who's 23 who will probably not use the skills of baseball? What kind of values need to go into this funnel? What kind of love needs to go into this funnel? Remember, kids spell love, T-I-M-E. What kind of responsibilities need to go into this funnel? They need to, what kind of responsibilities need to be taught? What kind of trust do they need to develop for themselves to trust their teammates, to trust their friends, to trust uh, their classmates and their teachers and their, and their mentors. What kind of work ethic needs to go into this funnel? What kind of faith, whatever your religious beliefs are, what kind of faith needs to be established and rooted here? I'm going to tell you, a lot of people struggle here with their faith. Do they schedule tournaments on Sundays? And they play on Sundays when, or Sunday mornings when that's supposed to be at church time. A lot of people struggle here and they lose sight of that. Remember, is that tournament more preparing him to try and be one of the 1,000 that use those skills? Or is that more important? That's a decision you have to make. What kind of mentors? This is a big one. 
Understand this, every mentor, every, so mentors, I'm talking about coaches, people who run or teams, organizations, academies, all those mentors, they are the part-time parents for your kid. So think about it like this. Let's say you had to take a two hour break from being a dad. You say, hey, you come in here and you be the dad of my son or the mom of my son for the next couple hours. I can't be dad. Well, that's what the mentors that come into your people, into your kids' lives are. They are the substitute parents for you for that period of time. We don't think of it like that, but they are very impactful adult role models. Do those mentors have the faith, the work ethic, the trust, the responsibility, the love, the values that you want to have in your child to go into this funnel to make sure when they take that first step out into the real world, they're the great leaders, parents, husbands, fathers, and professionals, you know, whatever profession they choose of tomorrow. What experiences have to go into this funnel? Are there failures? Because a big problem we have, I get emails every day, kids are not exposed to enough failure, and sometimes these kids are seeing their first failure when they're in high school, or, and it's like shocking to their system, because we just set them up in a place where they don't fail enough. I'm sure you can think of a lot of other things that need to go into this funnel. But if this were a funnel that was supposed to produce a college player, which by the way, there's only 100,000 players playing high school, so what is that? Is that 60 to 1, I think? So there's a very, very minimal chance your kid will probably even play past high school. I think it's 600 to 1. Someone will do the math and, and email it to me. There's a very small chance your kid will ever play beyond high school. So are we putting in baseball, 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 win, 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 stats, 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 better uniforms, better bats, better trips, uh, better tournament champions, do anything to win? Are we pushing that into that funnel and then expecting to have someone at 23 that's going to be a great leader, parent, father, husband? I've been thinking about this uh, and, and been, uh, when I get onto an idea, I really get into it, a uh, borderline obsession on it. And I've been really thinking about what needs to go into that funnel for us to prepare these men, these young men, to be the men, the leaders, the fathers, and the husbands, and the coaches of tomorrow. Because there's not a whole lot of jobs in this 1,000. And if you do have that ability, God bless you. I'm happy for you. I'll clap for you, and I'll cheer for you. But there's a whole lot more people that are going to end up in this 6.3, well, 6 point, whatever the math is. You know what I mean. It's a lot. I want to make sure that your son is spits out at 23 and we spit out a great man and not just somebody who got on some good teams and won some tournaments and got some rings and trophies and all that other kind of stuff. So something to consider and something to ponder. I'd love to hear what you would add to this list. What did I miss and what did I forget? Email to me, 567pitcher at gmail. So 567pitcher at gmail. Email me what else needs to go into this funnel. And if you have criticisms or you're going to write me a 10-page email about how I got this all wrong, save yourself the time. The minute I get into it and I see what it's about, I'm just going to delete it anyway. So if it's going to be some diatribe on how I got this all wrong, go spend time with your kids. There's better, to, better things to do with your time than to write me a critical email because I promise you I will give it no energy. But if you've got something positive that you want to put into this funnel, I want to hear it and maybe we'll put it into a video going forward. Thanks.